Welcome back into the story. We are at week two, session two, of the death of Jesus. Today we focus on the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Our story is found in the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, and we'll be looking at verses 12 through 19. Before we jump into the story, let's think about what has already happened? What's the context of today's story? So just before today's story begins, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. This miracle caused many of the Jews to believe in Jesus. Even more of them began to follow him. And the word about Jesus was spreading even more quickly. The chief priests and the Pharisees, the leaders of the Jews, were getting more and more upset as Jesus' popularity grew, and they were becoming more serious about planning his death. They were actually becoming so serious that Jesus could no longer walk about openly in the community. They had ordered his arrest, and they had also planned to put Lazarus to death. Immediately before today's story, we read about how Mary anointed the feet of Jesus. Today, the story begins as the Passover festival begins. At the beginning of this festival, crowds of people flock into Jerusalem to celebrate together the Passover. So open your Bible and turn to Chapter 12 in the Gospel of John. I invite you to either read along with me or just listen. You might want to grab a pencil or highlighter or something to write with. Feel free to stop the video at any point that you would like to. We begin by looking through the entire story today. Again, we are in John chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look! Your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. What a fascinating story. What a story to imagine as we hear the words of these stories. Just just picture what that parade-like atmosphere must have been. We begin in, chapter, in verse 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival, remember this next day, this is happening right after Mary anointed the feet of Jesus and the Passover. Well, this was the spring festival that was the heart of Jewish life. It celebrated the Exodus, the time when God freed God's people from slavery in Egypt. Hear the words in Exodus chapter 12, around verse 14. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. That verse gives the command to hold this festival. 
The festival was to remember and to mark the time when the Jews were instructed to, to put blood on their doors so that the angel of death would pass over them and not bring all of their firstborn to death. They were to celebrate this festival every single year. So on this particular celebration of this Passover festival, all of these people have gathered into Jerusalem and Jesus and his disciples come to them. So beginning again, that next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Now, there was a very short time, and it actually is a time that comes in between the, the Old Testament events and the New Testament events. There was this very short period of time when the Jews actually controlled their own city. The Jews actually had their own king for a time in this intertestimonial time. There was a leader called Judas Maccabeus, and he had gathered an army, and this army had marched into Jerusalem and had actually defeated their enemies. And when he marched in with his, uh, with his army, the people around began to, to, to break or to cut palm branches off of the trees and to wave them as he entered. This leader, Judas Maccabeus, had won the battle for the city. So don't you imagine that on this particular day, as, as Jesus came riding into the city, it reminded them of that other king from the past who also rode into the city victorious. It could be that as Jesus came riding in, some of them were thinking that perhaps, perhaps Jesus would be a great military leader and that when he got into their town, that he too would, would raise an army and maybe they could defeat their enemies once again. Jesus was clearly walking into a dangerous situation. It looked like a political uprising, except for the donkey. The passage quotes Psalm 118 as the people cry out. The verses 25 and 26 in Psalm 18 read, Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. In our story, as people break palm branches down, as Jesus rides into town, they begin to cry, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. They're quoting a bit from Psalm 118. And this word, Hosanna, the word actually means to save or to rescue, to, to deliver. It also was used as a, a cry for help, a plea to be saved. But people also shouted the word out just as a, a shout of praise. So Jesus rides into town on a donkey. People cut the palm branches and wave them in front of him and before him, and they cry out, Hosanna. Picking the story up now in verse 14, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Now these words came earlier in the Old Testament. The prophet Zechariah wrote in chapter 9, verse 9 of Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And also in Isaiah, the prophet writes in verse 62 of Isaiah, 
The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, see, your salvation comes. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. As Jesus rides into town, surely the thoughts of the people, since they are remembering these writings from their Old Testament, they are beginning to think of Jesus as one who will deliver them, one who will save them, one who will rescue them, one who, why he might just raise an army and, and defeat all of our enemies, except for the donkey. Jesus does ride into town, but he comes riding in on a donkey. Now, when great leaders or when kings and princesses would would enter a town, they would often decide what they were going to come in, how they were going to come in. If they were wanting to demonstrate their power and their might, they might ride in on, on some kind of white stallion perhaps and have their armies with flags and banners all around them demonstrating their power. But if they were coming to visit a town and they were coming in peace, then they would possibly ride a donkey, a donkey, a commonplace animal, something that many of the people in the town would own themselves, and they would come in in this humble way. And that is exactly, that is exactly the choice that Jesus makes as he comes into Jerusalem. Knowing that danger is before him, knowing that trouble is waiting for him, knowing that he is fulfilling God's will. He rides into town knowing all that will happen, but determined to announce his presence in a peaceful, humble way. And so he does. If we continue in verse 16, we read his disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had also been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. In the Gospel of John, the miracles that Jesus did, they weren't called miracles. John used a different word for them. He called them, he called them signs. Now they certainly were miraculous, but John called them signs. A sign, as opposed to a miracle, a sign shows Jesus to be the Son of God. A sign shows that Jesus is more than an ordinary human, that Jesus is the Son of God. In fact, the whole first half of the book of John is often called the book of signs because the miracles that Jesus performed pointed to his divinity. The second half of the book, chapters 13 to 20, is often called the book of glory because in this part of the book, after Jesus has been revealed as God's son, his glory is then shown, but glory not in a way that one might imagine. For the glory of Jesus is found first as he dies in a humiliating, lowly way on the cross, crucified as an ordinary criminal. His glory is seen in that sacrifice and in the raising, his raising from the dead by our Father. But all of that comes later. The Pharisees, beginning at verse 19, as they see what is happening, they are even more determined now than ever to get rid of this Jesus. In verse 19, the Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. What are they to do now? We'll see.